Greetings one and all. I'm so glad to have everyone here. My name is Bill Cole. I'm the director here at St. Gabriel and it is our privilege and my pleasure to be here on this special, special occasion. I could not think of a better place to be right at this moment. A couple of words before our service begins, uh, some coaching words for those who are non-Episcopalians. And as uh, Chris and Mel and I worked out this service, we thought it might be good on this occasion to open and to close with peace. And the way that we do that in our Episcopal tradition has its roots back in the ancient church, where one another would greet one another with the words, may the peace of the Lord be with you. And our response back is, and also with you. And so we will begin our service with that, and we will close with that. May the peace of the Lord be with you, and also, and also with you. Dear friends, we are gathered in our love for Chris and Melissa to celebrate with them the 11th anniversary of their marriage by prayer and thanksgiving, by the hearing of God's holy word, by the renewal of vows and the exchange of rings, and by the blessing of their ongoing life together. Draw near in that love. And may we be put in mind of our great affection for these two wonderful people. And that we may learn anew the strength, the creative power, and the grace of the covenant of holy matrimony. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully upon Melissa and Chris, who come to renew the promises that they have made to each other. Grant them your blessing and assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep their promises and vows through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Here in three. Second reading from the letter to the Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together 
perfect harmony. Here ends the reading. Every now and then we need a jolt. Maybe we've just nodded off. We need a little nudge from a loving elbow. We need a reminder of what we are all about. And so perhaps many of you join with me in giving thanks to Chris and Amel for the little nudge. For my peculiar way of seeing the world, I would call it a nudge from the divine elbow. This is a, a God thing in my eyes. Uh, the God of the Christian tradition is all about relationship, from the opening images of creation in Genesis to the closing visions of a new creation in Revelation. Our scriptures lift up and celebrate a God who longs for a relationship with all of creation. This is a relationship based not on fear or dread or righteous punishment, but on love. Our Tradition's not always gotten that right. We've not done a fantastic job from time to time with that message, and that is our failing and not God's. But this evening, in this small way, in this very large way, we celebrate covenantal love and relationship as God would have it. When we speak of love, we can all acknowledge that we start treading into some rather murky water, and we start Speaking of covenantal love, well, things get downright swampy. <laughs> but the Greek Testament, uh, the New Testament, uh, attempts to help us out with some of that, give us a filter, help us with a little clarity. We find in that book that there are at least three different words in the Greek for the same word that we use for love. And each of these have different understandings. The first is eros. Uh, the love that is simply that of giving oneself pleasure. I love a person, or chocolate, or in my case, coffee, <laughs> because it makes me happy. This is an important form of love, but it is not covenantal love. It is not the love of God's covenant. If Eros is the basis of my relationship with another, then my love will only last as long as my happiness does. A second form that you find in the Greek is is filial love, the, the love that seeks to make the other happy, to give the other pleasure. This can be a very binding love and is frequently the basis of a marriage. Oh, mom, she makes me so happy and I make him so happy. We're so happy together. We complete one another. This is the language of filial love, but again, this is a love that is good as long as happiness and pleasure are around. Otherwise, it goes away and it's replaced by resentment. It's not the love of the covenant. But the third form, agape, is the love of God. And agape is a love that we heard Ron and we heard Craig read about just a few minutes ago. Agape is a love that transforms, the love that generates new life. Agape is not simply self-sacrifice, as you may hear it often described. Yes, the love that Jesus poured out and the cross is, is, is an act of self-surrender, but it would be incomplete and meaningless without the resurrection. Agape always gives new life, every time.